Okay, good afternoon everybody and welcome to my presentation. During this 20 minute presentation I will try to present you some of the findings that I have discovered while doing some researches on my car. I will probably not have the time to get very much into detail since I have 20 minutes but do not hesitate to come and see me after the talk. I will gladly um, discuss, that, discuss that with you. As you will see, I have mainly focused on analyzing the multimedia unit of the car. And um, this paper has been prepared with my colleague and friend Florian Gauthier, aka Ajix, and he is currently busy playing the capture the flag game. I was also busy playing that game before the paper, but anyway, we were losing, so that doesn't matter. <laughs> Last but not least, I'm not a native English speaker, so if something is not clear or you simply do not understand me, do not hesitate to interrupt me. I will try to uh, speak better. So, today I will start by presenting myself, explaining who I am, and I will try to um, explain why I decided to do some research about the firmware of the, of the car. I will then present the models on which I did my research and I will try to explain how to find the firmware of the car because it's not always easy, how to upload the firmware on the car and what are my main findings. So my name is Paul Such. My Twitter nick is 0x222 and um, I will try to update my findings and to post my findings on that account. So feel free to follow me. In my life I'm a security engineer for a Swiss company called SCRT based in Lausanne, so near Geneva. And we are specialized in ethical hacking, digital forensic and IT security. My main hobbies are uh, mountain bike, I'm also a guitarist and I'm also a fan of motorsports and this is the reason why I decided to mix two of my hobbies, IT security and motorsport. I tried to do some research for IT security and mountain bike but I was not able to find a subject <laughs> covering, uh, not yet because as you have seen um, the new forks now are uh, electronic on the mountain bike so Maybe someday. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we are also the organizers of uh, a Swiss, the Swiss security event called Insomniac. This is now the eighth edition. It will take place in March 2015 in Geneva. There is a capture of the flag and some conference, and you are more than welcome to uh, to join us. So as I said before, the research was done with my friend Florian Gauthier. You can also follow him on Twitter. His, uh, his nickname is AGXID. So why um, I have decided to do some research on um, hacking car firmware? Well, for fun and profit, of course. No, a lot of researches have already been done regarding CAN bus, ODB2, and so on. And uh, I wanted to try something else and um, as you know, uh, the car entertainment system is the unit that can play the music, that can do the navigation, that can connect to your phone but it can, solve, it, uh, it can also do much more than just entertainment. Most of the car entertainment system today can also control the lights of the car, control the locking of the car, the heating system the auxiliary heating, a lot of options are possible to control using the car entertainment system. So it sounds interesting. And um, today I have discovered that a lot of cars have built-in options like television, like Bluetooth, like auxiliary heating that are just software activated. So it sounds interesting. The main model on which I did my research is a Volkswagen Touareg, the second version of the Touareg. 
f for, from 2011. Well, I live in Switzerland, as I said before. I'm living at, at 2,700 meter high, so I need a car that can drive on the snow. And this was an interesting car because the multimedia unit is quite uh, modern. It was possible to do a lot of things with that uh, unit. And uh, last but not least, this is an important detail. This is my everyday car. So it was not a car dedicated to my research. And this is a, a detail which is very important. You will understand why later on. <laughs> The multimedia unit of that car is called the RNS 850 and this is a unit that you can find in other cars like some Audi models, I think it's the Q7 but I'm not sure and in Audi it's called the MMI 3G. You can also find the same, um, same unit in some Bentley car I think. Y you can find that in several, several brands. So the first part was to get access to the firmware of the car. So I had to find some sources. The <coughs> first way is the hard way and it consists in dismounting the car, find the disc and do uh, a DD of the disc to, to get access to the, to the firmware. <coughs> the, the disc is located behind the glove box <coughs> so it's not easy to find and it takes some time to get access to the disc. So I discovered that after breaking the car. So <coughs> now you know where to find the, the disc. This is not the way I've chosen initially. You have a second option <coughs> which is to find an RNS 850 on eBay. The problem is I'm not sure the disc would, would be sold with the, with the unit. I was not sure if the disc was part of the car or was part of the unit. So this is not the option I have chosen. <coughs> you can try to do some social engineering on the, on the Volkswagen dealer you are working with but again I, I have not chosen this option. For some models I have discovered that the, the firmware of the multimedia unit is, is upgraded every time that you upgrade the GPS. I did some tests on an Audi TT of 2008 and in that case it seems that the firmware of the multimedia unit <coughs> is included in the CD that you get to up upgrade the GPS, the maps of the GPS. And the final option is just to use Google. <coughs> if you Google update firmware and the exact model of your multimedia unit, it's quite easy to find someone that will accept to sell you the firmware of the car. Probably um, it's a mechanic that is trying to, to sell it but um, anyway that works. So that's how I did to get access to the, to the firmware. Then you have to find a way to upload the firmware on the car. Again there is a possibility to um, Thank you. <coughs> and that's a recolite, it's made in Switzerland by the way. <laughs> so you can try to <coughs> No, 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 keep going. Okay. <laughs> So again you can try to upload the firmware by dismounting the disk, getting access to the disk and pushing the firmware on the disk. But there is another solution which is easier which consists in finding the magic combo. On most of the car if you find a special combination of key and you hold the keys during 3 to 5 seconds you can get access to a menu that will allow you to upload uh, the firmware on the car. I am sure it can wait. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, yeah, all right, come on. <laughs> no, 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 this is, this is not Jews. Yeah, we do this. Okay, sorry. He's, <laughs> he's not from this country. We're helping. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. How's he doing everybody? Is he doing good? Yeah. 
So in my case, you have to press phone and setup during three to five seconds to get access to that special menu. I drive every day, so during one year, I try to find the right combination of key <coughs> to get access to the menu. And by the way, if you want to reboot the, um, the multimedia unit, you need your five fingers because you have to press phone, climate, navigation, traffic, and button at the same time. So it's very difficult while you are driving. <laughs> Once you manage to get access to the menu, as you can see on the screen, there is a, well, my car is in French, so it, it speaks French like me. And you get access to, the, to a menu where you can upload the firmware and you can see the running binaries on the car. I don't know if you can see that. <coughs> but you see a lot of, of binaries there with a version, a checksum for each binary. These are the binaries which are running on the car. And you can see here that there are some binaries, some programs that I should not have on my car. I can see WLAN, I can see um, TV or things like that. I do not have those options on my car. Then if you navigate through the menus, you can get access to a new menu which is called upgrade and you can choose if you want to upgrade the firmware from the CD, the DVD or the USB, the USB plug which is in the car. There is also another option to upload the firmware and modify the firmware which consists in using a software provided by Volkswagen and the UDB2 connector but I, I have not, I do not have that, that, that software. Okay, once you have the firmware, this is the interesting part, you can try to analyze the, the firmware. In my case, it seems to be a mix of EFS and IFS. So we used a tool provided by QNX <coughs> to dump the file system. It was dump EFS. <coughs> Since then, it was not, the, um, we had to modify a little bit the um, dump EFS tool to create a new file system which was readable. The Python script is provided in my, in my, um, in my slide so that you can reproduce that. And we had to deflate some file and use dump EFS for the, e the IFS, sorry, for the IFS part. And we slightly had to modify the header of the file so that dump IFS could work correctly. What we see is that the firmware of the car is based on QNX. So RNS 850 is based on QNX. And we, ca we can see some health header and a super, I super H architecture. Sounds very interesting. So it's, it's clearly a Unix, Unix style file system. This is the simple script that we used to extract the file from the file system. So it's a Unix file system and we can see that he has an ETC password file, a PPP shadow file, everything that you can find on a Unix file system. What is more surprising that it is leaking a lot of interesting information that I was not expecting to find on my car. For example, you can see that some users are hard coded in the car. You can see the name of the guy, you can see that they have a shell on the car. So I decided to do some more research and it's cool because you can find the guys on LinkedIn. <laughs> so, so it seems that those guys are working for the manufacturer of the car or some company that have been subcontracted to, to, to write the, <laughs> maybe not anymore. <laughs> To, to write the firmware. But that's, there are some other things that are interesting. I think that leaking internal IP range is also good practice, isn't it? As you can see, again, in the firmware of the car, you can see the internal IP range of what seems to be Audi or Volkswagen. And yes, the car can, can do some Wi Fi, and there are some SSID pre configured inside the firmware. So yeah, it looks like uh, the person who developed this firmware are not very keen on IT security. So I did some research and um, 
I tried to modify some files on the car, and at first it worked. So I was able to push some new files on the car. And one day I tried to modify another file, which was <coughs> the pre configured answer for the SMS. And long story short, I finally managed to brick my car. And yeah, it's a very heavy brick. I do know exactly, I don't know exactly why, because I have not been able to understand how the checksum are calculated. And then it really happened, as I said before, when I was trying to replace a very dummy text file. So maybe something wrong happened just when I was uploading the file, I don't know. Then it took three months to fix the car. <laughs> it was really long because during that time uh, the car was not working as expected. And then um, first I bring the car to a first garage and then um, they said uh, we are sorry we do not understand what's happening. <coughs> I had to send it to a second garage. They were not understanding either. So I told them okay uh, a friend of mine told me <laughs> that <laughs> a friend of mine told me that it could be the hard, dri the, the hard drive of the car that needs to be replaced. <laughs> and, and they answered, sorry sir, there is no hard drive in that car. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so finally it took three months and they gave me back the car and they said we had to replace the black box of the car. So yeah. <laughs> Conclusion. Um, it's a very expensive hobby. <laughs> and um, my friend, wife, family do not want me to, to do some tests with their car anymore. And it's a shame because my car, m my wife has a very interesting car, but she do not want me to approach the car with a laptop anymore. <laughs> so initially my goal was to, to do some research on the multimedia li libraries of the car. I've been able to identify the libraries that are used to play MP3 videos and things like that. And it could be very, very interesting to, to look more in depth in those libraries to find some possibility to run a shell on the car. So I hope it was interesting. And if you have questions, you are free to, to ask. Thanks a lot. <laughs> When the car was bricked, it was still possible to, to drive, but I had no GPS, it was not possible to use central locking, it was not possible to turn on the light and turn off the light uh, when I was arriving home, it was not possible to control the heating of the car. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Sorry? The window still worked, yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I should have done. Find the hard drive first. 